Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Derek J. Wright, one of the co-owners of Houghton Horns, and welcome to today's live stream featuring the Paxman Series 4. So again, I am starting off these streams now by playing the instruments so that if you don't want to hear the talking and you just want to hear the Paxman Series 4 played, well, now you've heard it. Um, just in case anyone's curious, because I get this question a lot, the mouthpiece that I'm using with it is the Verist Everest, and it's uh, size 18.5. So, can you find a horn for under five, a new horn for under $5,000 these days that plays well? I wanted to title it this way because I was thinking the other day, um, a lot of manufacturers raised their prices on April 1st and this past April 1st, a lot of manufacturers and partners that we um, deal with raised their prices again. And looking through um, our website, I'm noticing that the number of new horns under $5,000 have really dwindled. Uh, before the pandemic, um, for many people, I would have said, you know, for high schoolers or college undergrads or, you know, amateur players, I would have suggested the four to six thousand dollar range uh, as a good range to find a horn in. But since then, almost all of the horns that started at four thousand dollars are now at in the fives and the sixes now. So really that four to six thousand dollar range has now truly become five to eight thousand dollars. And that's where you where you'll find those horns. Um, we can just take a look at our website here for a moment. Let me get to the track tab here. So if you take a look at the French horns on our website, this is sorted by price. So we have the, the Varus Scholar three quarter size single horn. Then we have a bunch of Varus demos. By the way, in case you're wondering what the Varus demos are, they're instruments that we um, receive that may have had a little uh, damage from, um, from shipping when we imported the instruments. So we can't sell them as new, but they're still as new. We repaired the damage and they're good to go. Um, of which, stay tuned, um, in a few days we'll be running a big sale on um, on these various horns, the various 5s, 5Gs, and the demos uh, for a pretty significant amount off. But moving past um, the various 5 demos here, so we have the Yamaha 567, which is at um, $39.58 for now. Um, and then we have the Paxman Series 4, which is at $49.95. So just under $5,000. So we basically have um, various, the various 5 and 5G. Um, we have the Yamaha 567. And then we have the Paxman Series 4 as far as horns that we that we carry that are new horns that we carry that are under $5,000. If we keep going, many horns that used to be under the $5,000 mark, the Vera Chicago, Veris KX, Stom V Elite, the XO1650, Con 11D, oops, I should remember to Silence my phone before I start a live stream. Sorry about that. Um, a lot of these horns that used to be under $5,000 are now clearly um, 
well over five. So, the question being, are those last few horns that are under $5,000 still good? I would say if you're shopping for a horn, you can find something under five, but you're really limiting yourself. However, I think the Paxman Series 4 is a huge diamond in the rough here. As you could hear from my playing, I think the horn gets a nice big sound. And uh, it's really easy to play. The keys, for example, I know um, I always mention, if you've ever done a horn appointment with me, that um, you shouldn't pick a horn based on how the keys feel or the ergonomics of the instrument. But the keys on this horn feel really good. The key action is really light, it's nimble, it's excellent. Um, I find that the intonation on the horn is great and it just has a really, it's really, really easy to play. And one thing that I always count as a real benefit for a horn is the amount of energy you have to put into the instrument in order to get a good sound out. And I think the ratio on the Paxman Series 4 is great. You don't have to put a whole lot of energy in to have a really great result in sound. So let's talk a little bit more about the Series 4. Going back to this tab here. Which, by the way, yes, I'm starting to use some of the more fancy features of my um, live stream switcher here. Of which, by the way, um, I will take questions or um, about anything related to horn, if it's the Paxman Series 4, if it's about lower cost horns or anything French horn um, related that you want to talk about in chat after um, I finish talking about the Paxman Series 4 here. So reading Paxman's description here, the Paxman Series 4 is the natural bridge between the academy student horns and the professional level instruments. It incorporates several features usually only found on top level horns. These include a detachable bell as standard, water key on the mouth pipe, protective nickel guards, and nickel silver valve casings. So what does all of that mean? Number one, including a detachable bell as standard. So that is nice for, um, you know, for a lower cost horn. Although I will say in manufacturing, it's actually cheaper to do a detachable bell than it is a fixed bell, but um, we'll keep that between the two of us or between me and however many dozens of you are watching this video. Um, water key on the mouth pipe of which it's a nice solid water key. Although I think uh, most horns include them unless it is something that is specifically excluded. Um, protective nickel guard, hand guards, of which this is something a few years ago I would have stated as, um, as something that you would have found universally on horns. But um, a lot of... Um, horns are starting to remove the guards. I almost said cheaper horns, but um, that's not always the case. Some more expensive horns leave off the guard as well. Um, for example, Khan has decided to leave the protective hand guard off of many of their newer models. And um, they do that because of the sound, reducing, getting rid of that piece there, um, reducing the weight of the horn a little bit. Um, does have an effect on sound and many times it's positive and um, some uh, custom level horns also leave that guard off and they do it for the same reason to improve the sound um, and some cheaper horns leave the guard off because um, it saves some cost by leaving the guard off and not having to shape and solder that piece on um, 
for my opinion, I think it's something that should really remain. Because uh, if you don't have that guard there, you would really be well advised to use a leather hand guard. But if you're looking for a leather hand guard, please look at our Varus leather hand guards made in house um, out of premium leather. Again, but aside from the little plug there, um, if you don't have that guard there, you need to use a leather hand guard. And not everyone wants to wants to use one. Um, this is just a place. A hand is always going to be placed. Um, and I like the idea that there is a little extra protection between the corrosive um, oils um, in your skin and the horn itself. Okay. Um, and nickel silver valve casings. So nickel silver valve casings is a nice feature. Um, for valve casings, you really want it to be nickel silver or, um, yeah, you really want it to be made out of nickel silver. And I think some are made of bronze, but I'm not sure about that. Um, it's a harder wearing metal. So they will, um, because valve wear is not just the rotors themselves. The rotor casings can wear as well. And nickel silver being a harder metal than yellow brass or gold brass, um, will take longer to wear. So you have specifications. Geyer style wrap. Uh, Geyer style ish. Um, a true traditional Geyer, the F branch would go all the way around. And it would omit the double loop here you have um, on the F side of the horn. But um, as far as the valves being in the line and the change valve being at the bottom, um, this would most closely be described as a Geyer style horn. And it's a medium sized horn. So the horn itself is not very large. The, the bell is definitely um, on the more medium than medium large or large side. Um, in my opinion, medium and medium large are measurements that are really subjective. There is no official, hey, if the bell taper is this, it is medium large. If the bell taper is this, it's medium. So it's really um, just comparative going by what people want to call it. So some people will call something a medium. Other people will call it a medium large. And no one is right or wrong because there's no standard for that. Um medium large bore. Hey, speaking of that, so Paxman describes this as a, um, a medium large horn, um, yellow brass, which uh, I would recommend for a guy or style horn. Some people do like gold brass because it's a little more mellow. Um, but I think yellow brass gives you the best combination of um, the bright sound of nickel silver, which yes, nickel silver is a bright sounding metal. Yes, it's used on Kinate Ds, which are not bright sounding horns, but they're but they're dark sound but the reason they sound dark has nothing to do with nickel silver. Um so between the brightness of nickel silver and the uh, mellowness of gold brass. And I just find yellow brass gives you just more flexibility to choose the tone that you'd like to create. Um yeah, water key on the mouth pipes. So we've already talked about that. There we go. Um, movable thumb lever. So this is actually, <laughs> this is a really nice feature of this horn. So you're having a um, horn that you've already have established is on the less expensive side of brand new horns. But having the movable thumb key along with the movable pinky hook really helps improve the ergonomics of the horn. And the reason why that's important I was going through, um, I, it, the reason why that's important is because any tension kills sound. Um, and tension kills sound is a quote that is in the Brass Gym written by uh, Sam Palafian and Patrick Sheridan. I did my doctoral degree at Arizona State while they were both teaching there. In fact, Sam Palafian was on my um, um, committee for um for my um, doctoral documents. Uh, and I was going through it, playing some of the exercises, and I just saw that quote 
tension kills sound. I think that's really true. Tension here kills sound. Tension in your body kills sound. Tension in your hand kills sound. If you're struggling in any way, um, that tightness affects every part of your body and it makes it so that you cannot get the most ideal sound. So we have here, um, attachable bell includes a mouthpiece, um, a very generic mouthpiece. It does include a mouthpiece. It's not a mouthpiece that I would recommend that uh, anyone use. Um, set of oils and a Paxman um, backpack case. So the case it comes with, uh, I should have brought the case with me. Because um, I keep telling myself I'm going to start showing the cases when I do these streams talking about the horn. But it is, uh, if you've seen the Marcus Bonnet MB1, it is a case that is very much uh, modeled after that. Um, so it's nice and compact, um, a, a good size. You can't really carry much of anything else in it, but it is a good case. And I might as well read this last text here while I'm here. Based on Paxman's highly successful series three, the series four shares many of its characteristics. The bell is medium large, the optimum for this type of instrument made in yellow brass for a characteristic, warm, yet exciting sound. The wrap is based on a Geyer style, which makes it particularly free a particularly free blowing horn. The left hand position is adjustable by means of a movable thumb lever to make it suitable for the younger player or the adult. I would say that this horn is pretty free blowing and um, I'm not sure that's really attributable to the wrap of the horn, but it is, it is free blowing. Um, so overall, I guess to answer the question is that, yes, there are still a few horns under $5,000 that I would recommend. Obviously, Varus are, horn, are the horns that we designed, so I would recommend those, or we would redesign it, so they could be recommended. <laughs> um, um, and I would recommend the um, Paxman Series 4 in that range as well. Um, my only... The only issue there is that if you limit yourself to, okay, to a max of $5,000, you're going to be limiting yourself. Even once you throw used horns into the mix, because remember good used horns don't depreciate that much. They kind of go down a bit, you know, the initial jump between new and used, but if they stay in good condition, used horns tend to um, keep going up in value and keep chasing the price of the new horn if that makes any sense so let me take a look at chat and see if there have been any questions you know i never know if anyone's watching these things but um, let's take a look so we have here from edgar chow with this new setup, by the way, let me know what you think of this new setup. I just wanted to make um, reaching my streaming deck a little easier. And um, also just wanted to try a little different background. But I realize I have to lean back to look at my screen. So from Super John, we have hi. I started playing horn. Do you have any tips on playing high notes? What horn is good for beginners? So for beginners, especially um, assuming that you are an adult beginner, I would go straight to a double horn. And really, you know, I was just looking at our website here, looking at one of those uh, various demos that we have, I think would be an excellent horn um, because it's in the $3,000 price point. So for horns, it's not very expensive. I don't mean to say that $3,000 is not a lot of money. It is, but for horns, it's not very expensive. And you'll have a horn that is in tune, um, has a good sound, and can take you very, very far. As far as high notes, my best tip is you don't have to work very hard. If you are straining and fighting the instrument and just like trying to overcome it, you're doing the wrong thing. You will never win that battle. You, you cannot just get so hard, so good at blowing and so good at getting tight 
that you finally reach this pinnacle of tightness and um, air where the high notes you know, sound easy and free. Really, anything regarding the French horn. If you are working hard, you are doing the wrong thing. Horn playing should be physically easy. For example, I, I, if I play some high notes here, I want you to look at my face to see how much strain there is. So if you were looking at my face, you see I'm not getting really tight. I'm not straining. It doesn't look like I'm working really hard. And that's not just because I've built up so much muscle that it's not hard anymore. It's that I'm blowing the air in such a way that I'm not trying to overcome the horn. I'm not trying to fight the horn. So that would be my best recommendation for high register. And don't try to jump up high as quickly as you can. Start by getting a nice, good sound on a note in the middle register. I would, con I would um, suggest E at the bottom of the staff. Get a really good sound on that note. And then go a half step up, add F. And then go a half step up, add F sharp. Day by day, add notes. Don't get in a hurry. Don't feel like you need to reach the high register in five days. And if you can... can work yourself up that way, getting a good sound and an ease of play, you will eventually find that you will have a good high register. Okay, and then we also have a question from Edgar Chow. Well, a statement. Um, while the nickel handguard is very good in protecting the horn, I often wish there was an alternative besides lacquer or a leather wrap with those of us with metal allergies. Um, yeah, and I don't really know of any sort of alternative. Um, I would definitely go with letter wrap over lacquer because um, depending on the, um, um, you know, your the content of the oils of your hand, et cetera, um, there's a good chance that you'll eat through the lacquer pretty quickly. Um, and if you're dealing with metal allergies, that's not something you'd want to do. So I would definitely recommend um, the letter wrap on that. Um, and if you think of anything, um, maybe that's a great opportunity for a new product. Also, I have been interested in trying a new mouthpiece, specifically your new Everest mouthpiece. Is the rim on the Everest comparable to the Houghton H3 rim? It is not. So, whoops. So the rim on the Everest is not really um, comparable to um, anything in the Houghton line. It's its own thing. It is um, pretty thick and it's um, pretty flat. It's definitely more along the lines of a comfort rim. It is something that is made to, while preserving articulation and observe and preserving flexibility, and most importantly, preserving tone, provide you with a comfortable experience playing the horn. Because if you're comfortable, if you're comfortable, you will be more likely to want to take musical risk as you're playing and really push the boundaries of your musicality. If you're not very comfortable, you're more likely to kind of hold back and not be as free. So that is the philosophy behind the rim of the Everest. But no, it is not like the H1, H2, or H3. It is very different from all of those. Okay, and that is it for the questions today. Um, so um, 
Again, please uh, leave a comment letting me know how you feel about this new setup. Uh, leave a comment if you have any other questions about the Paxman Series 4 or any other sub $5,000 horns. Um, and uh, by the way, I'm also using a new mic, uh, new mic for the music today. So if um, you have any comments about the um, sound quality of the recording of the playing I did at the video, please let me know. But um, I'm Dr. Derek Wright, and I will see you with another horn next week. Oh, I got one more question here from Ethan Clark. I currently use the Varus PF and I enjoy the sound and feel overall. How does the Everest compare? Well, Ethan, you have great taste. Uh, I only say that because I personally used the uh, Varus PF for many years before switching to the Everest. Um, and I think the PF is a very, is an excellent mouthpiece. The, Feel and resistance of the PF is going to feel similar to the Everest. Um, the Everest has a sweeter sound, so it's a sweeter, warmer sound um, than the various PF. The rim is going to be very different. Um, so the rim is um, going to be wider and much more cushier than the rim on the uh, various PF. But that being said, the two mouthpieces are not going to be like night and day. Um, so I hope that answers your question. And I think that is finally it for the comments. So thanks, and I will see you later.